Welcome to Kiss the Reviews. I'm Armando. That's Corey. And today we're doing 2015's Creed. So before we get started, if you want to reach out and follow me and Corey on Twitter, you could follow me at Junior D's. You could follow Corey at Corey underscore Idle. As always, you can follow the show on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Kiss the Reviews. Yay. <laughs> so let's get into the cast of 2015's Creed. This film stars Sylvester Stallone as Rocky Balboa, Michael B. Jordan as Adonis Johnson, Tessa Thompson as Bianca, and Felicia Rashad as Mary Ann Creed. It's a really good cast. I'm glad they're kind of. I was excited to see a redo, but also at the same time, I'm like, why is Rocky in another fucking movie? <laughs> like, can't this dude just do it on his? Michael B. Jordan's a big enough star. Like, can't he just be, you know, the story of him? Why is, why does Rocky's life always got to intercede in this shit? And here, here's what sucks about it is, I say that, and then I watch the movie, and I'm like, fuck! Because he always hits me right in my feels, every time. Sad <laughs> oh, 100%. Sylvester Stallone is the worst. <laughs> the worst. I don't, I hate seeing that. Sad, punchy Rocky is even yeah. more. Yeah. I know this isn't great English, it's even more worst. <laughs> it's terrible no it really is um the and here's the here's the sadness of it all this is what this is what brings me the feels the reason rocky's still in these goddamn movies is because a you got to be like oh this is we're this is part of the franchise so you got to be in it and also he has no rights to any of these fucking movies so he's got to be in the movie to make any goddamn money off of it um, and speaking of which, fuck you, Warner Brothers. So everybody that's watching this right now, we've had some issues in the past. Um, you know, a lot of YouTube channels have copyright issues if you're using clips from movies and yada yada. So we try to stay in the framework of what's allowed. And that's why we don't use super long clips of things and yada yada. Um Everybody kind of plays in the sandbox together, except for Warner Brothers, for some strange reason. I found out the reason. It's because they're a bunch of bitch asses, okay? And as soon as I, I hit play on Creed, I don't do, obviously, we've talked about it. We don't do any research on these fucking movies or whatever. We watch the movies, we talk about the movies, and we insert some jokes. Hopefully, you guys laugh. But when I hit play, I'm more cognizant of all of the uh, film companies attached to all these movies. And as soon as I saw the goddamn huge WB, I was like, Jesus Christ. Well, looks like there's no clips in this one. So if you guys come in for the clips, this is going to be a long, bumpy ride for you because it's just me and Corey's beautiful faces on this one. Lucky sons of bitches. So. Yeah, uh, I'll put it to you like this. The reason Warner Brothers are so cunty with their material as opposed to every other movie studio out there is because the large and mighty Warner Brothers, who have brought us numerous fantastic films that we would love to review, I mean all of them, are so dead-ass fucking broke because of mismanagement right now. Yes. That a fucking show with just around 1,200 fucking subs on YouTube is a threat to their copyrighted material. They can't spare 10 minutes of one of their precious films because they need the money that fucking bad. That's yes. like living a mile from the grocery store and charging your friend a fucking uh, gas money to take him there. Bullshit. <laughs> Absolutely. Bunch Absolutely. of fucking punks. Warner yes. Brothers can eat shit. And you're lucky that you have so many good people that are willing to work for you to even review this stuff thing. Because this is a good movie. Yes. Spoiler alert. And Warner Brothers puts out a lot of really good movies. 
I wish to fucking hell I could honestly lie and be like, man, there's movies so shit, and I hate reviewing them, but I can't. It's just you, Warner Brothers, are so fucking dead ass poor, which is why Armando hates you. You're yes. a poor. You're a poor. And you need to get your shit together. Absolutely. You, your bank account looks like mine when I was 20 years old. Is it possible this story is true? Yes, it is. But let's get into this. Enough shitting on Warner Brothers. I'm sure we'll continue to do it because next week we're doing Creed 2. So there'll be more Warner Brothers to shit on there. But this movie starts off, and I really like the writing in this movie, uh, but it starts off with uh, Adonis Johnson. He's in juvie. He's getting into fights. Marianne Creed comes in. Uh, she gives him the speech about, you know, Creed is your father. She takes him in. So apparently Apollo, which is, this is, it's not good writing. It's more true to life. He was a professional athlete and he stepped out on his wife. <laughs> oh, <laughs> had yeah, a, he was, had a kid he was, outside. He was Sean Kemping every place he had a fight. <laughs> the good news is fighters aren't like the NBA where you're stopping in 18 different cities over the course of two weeks. Yes. They're, they're like Vegas. You know, he's probably got two or three kids. Yeah. New York, Philly, like L.A. He's got a couple here or there, but it's not like from Seattle to Florida. Yeah. Just follow the he's, fucking interstate and you'll find children. He's Sean not like Kemp. Antonio Cromartie. <laughs> but so the, the movie starts off really well. And then we get scenes of him um, like working in L.A., works for like some financial firm. Because obviously, you know, he's all grown up. He's gone to school. Marianne has sent him to really good schools. So he's a professional. But he's also boxing in Mexico on, like, the weekends. Which um, is really weird. Like, yeah, you can go somewhere else and box. You don't have to, like, skip across the border. What? I don't well, understand. What, so, what are you afraid of? Nobody he, knows who you are anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're going to care. They're going to care about you as much as they care about you in Mexico, which is not at all. Yeah. Let's go well, fight. And what's really weird, because he, he, he keeps the name Johnson because he wants to make it on his own merit, which is fine. But then he goes to the Delphi gym where the, the trainer there worked with his dad years ago and yada, yada, yada. And this trainer treats him like he's just some piece of shit jack dude off the street that just started boxing yesterday. Like, he's like, yeah, it ain't gonna happen. See these guys? This guy's the number four ranked boxer. This guy's the number two ranked boxer. I'm fucking training these guys. Suck a dick, Creed. Like, it's, it's really funny, but also I'm like, you knew the dude's dad and you're not giving him any fucking play? Kill or be killed, people die in there. Your daddy died in the ring. This ain't no joke. This part is really weird to me because uh, this is where Adonis gets in the ring, right? And he's like, yep. he fucks up the one dude. And he's like, who else wants it? Who else wants it? The number two ranked fighter in the world is like, yeah, I'll take a piece of that shit because he wants a Mustang. Who wouldn't? Yeah. And he loses. And then like Avon Barksdale because let's give it up for Avon Barksdale. Oh, yeah. Avon Barksdale's like, uh, by the way, I told you you weren't ready. Yeah, because I'm fighting the number two guy in the world. <laughs> yes. And I'm asking you to train me. I, you know, like, he's not asking to be the fucking champion. He's not asking for a title shot. He yeah. just wants somebody to train him and put him into some fights. Yeah, exactly. And he's well, like, I, I can't do you that. Know, you don't have what it takes. I don't know, dude. He knocked out one of your fucking dudes real fucking quick, and it yes. took the number two fighter in the world a well, couple minutes to put him down. And the dude that he knocked out was like the number four or number six yeah. fighter or whatever it was in, in yeah. the world. But what I really loved about this scene, because it, it, it gives you exposition mm -hmm. without, without words. The fighter mm -hmm. walks up. And then they got the, the boxer stats. I really, really yes. liked how they did that throughout this, the, the beginning of this movie. Mm -hmm. And they, yeah, yeah. They, they incorporate almost the sports media aspect of boxing. Yep. 
into this so well and so seamlessly, uh, so seamlessly that it really does work and it puts you in the world. It makes yeah. it feel very real. Yep. And, and after this, so he goes home, he tells uh, Marianne that he's going to box full time. He quit his job. She basically told, go tells him to pound sand and she's, she's done with it. She leaves the room. And then he goes to Philly to find Rocky so he can train him. And as every Sylvester Stallone movie goes, he's the reluctant hero. And he, I, don't want I haven't been to Mickey's in fucking years. So we get that Rocky. Um, what I do like about this Rocky <sighs> and what I hated about like Rocky four was like Rocky became like this prima donna bitch in Rocky four. Like mm. he's wearing suits all the time and he's dressed. I like this Rocky where it's like, all I'm doing is wearing leathers in my fedora and I still got my fucking racquetball and fuck that Rocky. Always the best Rocky period. Yeah. Ro ro the Rocky where he had the robot made was not a fan <laughs> of those scenes. Yeah. That's We're very happy for your opulence, but also go fuck yourself. Rocky became unlikable when he was rich. Everybody becomes unlikable <laughs> when they're rich. It's just a fact. Yep. That's why I've been unlikable while I'm poor, because I know I'll at least keep the real ones by my side when I'm weak. <laughs> Absolutely. But so after this, we get... Um, he moves into because, you know, he's now a poor, apparently. Mm -hmm. So he moves into like his studio apartment. He meets Bianca, who lives below him, who's playing music way too loud. And he has the most real reaction here because he's trying to sleep because he's got to start working out because mm -hmm. he goes to Mickey's gym and he gets the Mickey's gym treatment there. And the music's loud. He's like, fuck this shit. I'm going to go downstairs and I'm going to fuck this person up knocks on the door and Bianca answers. And he has the reaction that I would have if Bianca opens the door and I'm really pissed about the music because his face goes from I'm pissed to, Oh shit. Where your mom at? Like it's the reaction immediately changes. And I find it hilarious. If I just moved to a new city, I'm going to be 100% honest. <laughs> Mama June could have opened that fucking door and I'd have been like, yo. Hell yes. But they, you know, they start to develop their relationship. They go out a few times and we get the uh, the cheesesteak scene where she takes him out for, for cheesesteaks. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I respected about this, like she didn't take him to like Geno's. Like... She took him to like the the offshoot, like this is actually Philly kind of thing. Right. And we get the John explanation. It's a noun. Okay. It's like a see, these is Johns. This is a John. That whole scene was just infuriating. Cause I'm like, the whole time I'm like, what the fuck is a John? Yeah. And then she's like, oh, it's a noun. Clearly. That's how you've been using it. I know basic grammar. What the fuck is a John? This is a John. That's a John. You're a John. So it's just a word so you don't have to say other words? Yes. Hey, put some John on that. What do you mean? This John? That John? No, I mean that fucking John. <laughs> Not that John. It's meat or chicken, lady. Say meat or chicken. You were right. Every time she said John, I'm just like, dude, she's got to have so many zits on her back. It's unbelievable. <laughs> That's a staple of Philly, in case you didn't know. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. But Donnie here, like he keeps going to Rocky. Rocky finally gives him some drills that he can do on his own. Mm -hmm. um, but he's still like, no, I can't train you because. Listen, in, in, in this universe. Rocky is one of the greatest, you know, heavyweights of all time, even though he's five foot eight and in no universe could he be a heavyweight. But whatever. He's one of the greatest heavyweights of all time. Um, FYI, most of these guys just go away. They're not like every former boxer, like in Creed 2, you get Drago. Like 
every former great boxer all of a sudden becomes like this great trainer. Like that's not how it works, but whatever. He says no. He keeps saying no until he doesn't. Um, because after he speaks to Adrian's ghost, he decides, okay, now I'm going to go ahead and I guess train Adonis here and whatever. I actually like this part a little bit because it does illustrate why he finally, because again, you've, you've mentioned it as we've gone along here. It's a Sylvester Stallone movie. He's a reluctant hero. So it's definitely a Sylvester Stallone movie, <laughs> and, which means we get three no's and a yes. He's going to say yes. no three times to the mission. Then he's going to yeah. go like, all right, let's fucking do it. And then we're going to fucking go do it. So this one, it actually explains a little bit why he said yes. Yeah. Because of how fucking empty his life, like everyone he knows is literally in the grave. Yeah. The only people he's talking to can't speak back to him because they're fucking dead. Yes. And he's like reading the paper to him and shit. It's like, no, bro, that's not a life. So at least he understands that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I got to get the fuck out of this rut because this is this is my life right now. It's fucking ridiculous. Well, and I got a quick don't do that about this scene. Don't do that. It's not good for you. Hi, old Italians. Um, we, we get it. Like, your, your wife has died, your brother-in-law has died. Everybody you know is dying off. At, at, at a certain age, you get to that point where you're like the last man standing, right? So we know that people go to the grave sites, lay down flowers, and that's okay. You can totally do that. What you don't do, don't put a fucking chair in a tree because you go there. So just bring the chair with you. What what are we doing here? You just uh, he goes over to the tree and he just yanks the fucking old and and listen, if you're gonna bring a chair or put a chair in a tree, which I don't suggest you do, not an old wooden chair. It snows in Philly, it rains in Philly. That chair is old and rotted. Your old ass is gonna sit on that thing and fall straight through at some point. Okay? Just buy a plastic chair from Walmart. They're like ten bucks. And yeah. carry it with you. You fall through those too, FYI. <laughs> yeah, no, this is incredibly, incredibly sad. Yes. It's just like, dude, like, in no way is this healthy. It's not a healthy way to live. It's not a healthy way yeah. to fucking mourn, grieve. Yeah. What, like, you may as well just dig a fucking hole yourself if you're not going to go train this fucking kid. So. Yeah, exactly. He well, says yes and... Hey, now this is what pisses me off because the second he says yes, right? He walks back in the gym and that fucking piece of shit, Pete or whatever his name is, runs yeah. over and he's like, hey, Rock, I haven't seen you. You're going to train my son? Yeah. This is why I don't believe in coaching your own kids. And my father coached me in rec leagues before and it was great, but he was hard as shit on me. Yeah. Like, he was not, he did not take it easy on me. This guy is, like, so overprotective of his son, who's a boxer, it's fucking ridiculous. Because he immediately throws out, oh, hey, being trained by Rocky, you're brand new, and I already turned you down, kind of. Awesome. Why don't you fight my son, huh? 17 and 0, fuck you. Yeah. Well, so, a couple of things that I found um, interesting and, and funny and whatever. So. We get him, uh, Pete or whatever his name is, like, yeah, you could fight my guy because you're training, you know, this kid. And apparently you dissed my kid because you didn't want to train him because you're training this guy, whatever. But we get the scene where Donnie fights that dude, right? Mm -hmm. And he knocks the fucking snot out of him. And before the fight, this fucking Pete guy, right, walks up to, to Rocky. Hey, can I talk to you out in the fucking hallway real quick? Hey, I did some research, found out that this is Creed's kid. And, you know, what the blah, 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 blah. And Rocky says, don't say anything. Mm -hmm. He's trying to make it on his own. Don't say anything. 
The next fucking day. Listen, you could talk, and I know all these guys. You could talk like, hey, we're Italian. We grew up together. We don't fucking ran nobody out. There's always this asshole in the fucking crew. I found out one bit of information that I can use for whatever reason, and it's out there. Literally 24 hours after the fight. All that shit's out on like TMZ and whatever the fuck. And... This is my quite like, so it's Creed's son, and his whole thing was this whole fight is a different thing now, Rock. Right? Yeah. Like, we can make a lot of money off of this now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's his angle. Yeah. So his son still gets his ass beat, which I'm like, wow, I'm glad Rocky kept that on the DL because the whole world would have just saw my ass get, or my son get his fucking ass handed to him. Yes. So pass, hard pass on that, yeah, first yeah, yeah. of all. But second, now you're fucking ratting him out after the fact. Yes. For what? Yeah. What is your net game here? Yes. Honestly, and- like, you don't get a rematch. You're not forcing anybody's hand. And, by the way, you're probably losing your fucking job at the goddamn gym. Yeah, well, a couple of things here, because here's another quick don't do that. Don't do that, it's not good for you. Hi, people who are, I don't know, given a secret to keep. You find something out, somebody says, don't tell nobody. So if if you tell people, now your reputation as a fucking trainer, as a whatever, it's fucked. You can't trust this guy with anything. So now you're screwed. Not only did your kid get fucking, get his ass kicked, now your reputation's screwed. So, okay, cool. But then... If you keep that secret, you can parlay that. Play the long game. I think that's the that's the, the don't do that. Just don't wrap people out immediately. Play the long game. You 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 stand to gain more from playing the long game than you do like I know a secret and you tell everybody. Yeah. This is this is a a recipe for nothing but hardcore raw grit. yes yes absolutely but and what i do love about this film and about the writing of this film because you you know you have the uh rocky uh hesitant to train and yada yada Mm -hmm. after this fight we then because we've gotten the backstory of the the british fighter the number one he's the champ yada yada and we get the the final fight so donnie gets the call that the champ because he's basically going to prison and wants one more fight to make his money before he goes to prison and he wants an easy fight Mm -hmm. hey we found out creed's is his dad we could build this as this huge thing we can all we all stand to make a lot of money and my guy's gonna win so donnie's like dude i want to do this fight and what i love about this is rocky doesn't hold him back in most movies this is where the trainer now it happens in the second one but this is where the trainer Mm -hmm. says ah you can't win he's so much better you don't have enough experience yada yada rocky goes if you're in i'm in and they immediately go to the fight love that about this movie there's no yeah i mean this is literally the exact same thing that built Rocky into what he was Yes, as a fighter. So it's like, how could you, how could you stand in his way and be like, nah, I don't know. Yeah. You're exactly. denying the guy a fucking robot maid. You can't do that. <laughs> no, everybody needs a robot maid at some point. They really do. I mean, or at least it's... a Nintendo power glove. <sighs> so we get to the fight. And in true Rocky fashion, we get a goddamn brutal beating of both of these people. Yes. But mostly because Donnie loses the fight on a split decision. But it's like, you're here. You, you, you've, you've, you've hit this level. You can fight these people, but you still lost on the split decision. Like, that was the most Rocky ending of... of rocky isms like that's that's the most rocky thing they could have done here oh yeah this is a modern day rocky one hundred percent yeah um 
which I don't have a problem with. Rocky one is great. It's not as well written. There aren't as many surprises to it. I think you're uh, a bad guy, if that's what you want to call him. I don't know. It's just that there was something completely missing from him. And, like, and I get it's the fight or the movie is more about Michael B. Jordan yeah, as yeah. Adonis versus Adonis. It's, you know, I constantly mentioned like fight yourself. You know, you're fighting the guy in the mirror. I get that that's the message in the movie. However, our champion here and his little fucking Carl Pilkington beady ass eyes and his posh fucking accent, like it just did not play. His fucking trainer slash dad, I'm guessing, was a lot more intimidating than he was as a fighter. Yes. And even like his talking shit in the, in the uh, press conference before the fight, you know, they're like, oh. I'm a real rags to riches story. It's like, no, you're fucking not. You're fucking <laughs> rags to riches to fucking orange jumpsuit, you bum. Why are you talking any kind of shit to me? Michael B. Jordan's just like, oh, he's the fucking champ. I gotta sit here. Fuck that. Like, you're trying to make this bad guy seem bad, and he just, like, Creed 2? That's a bad guy. Yes. You have purpose, and he is intimidating as shit. This guy... Go and load some fucking boxes, warehouse worker. You don't fucking intimidate me. <laughs> well, and he's not the the cool thing about, and obviously next week we'll do Creed 2, but the cool thing about Creed 2 is when you look at that boxer, he's jacked. He's a big dude. He's jacked. Like this this fighter with a pretty Ricky or whatever the fuck his name was, it looks like he never went to the gym. No. Like he's got like man titties and like there's, he doesn't have any shape to him as a boxer. No. And even in like in the first Rocky, there was such a, a difference in who Apollo was as a person versus who Rocky yeah, was yeah. as a person. Yep. And that alone. And then you can add into the race and, you know, cause Philadelphia, they don't yeah. like black people. So we're fucking going down that road and, yeah, like there was so much more in that where Apollo wasn't a bad guy, but there was such a clear difference in between the two characters. You couldn't help but root for one or the other. It yeah. wasn't like I don't care who wins. You wanted fucking Rocky to win because he was the underdog. Everybody loves the underdog. Yeah. Michael B. Jordan did not feel like the underdog here. No, when they stepped into the ring and you saw them like side by side, you're like Michael B. Jordan is obviously the winner because just look at him like <laughs> when you look like that you should be the champ it looks like he's fighting a janitor like that's <laughs> yeah dude that's like killmonger fighting me get the fuck out of here i'm not the black panther i can't yeah. fight him yeah you fucking crazy <laughs> like but, nah, man. I mean, it, it, that outside, was the only part that did not do it for me, though. Yeah, I was going to say, outside of that, I would have actually liked, and I know, again, a lot of the stuff that I didn't like, they turned it around and fixed it in Creed 2. Um, 100%. But I would have rather had him fight one of those, like the number two guy, the number four guy, whatever. I would have rather had seen him fight one of those guys at the end of this and then you're you're almost setting up the the championship bout in part two and then it gets derailed and he does the whole drago thing but those guys the number two the number four the number six guy they were all jacked actual boxers and then you had sloppy titties mcgee that was just like Oi, we gonna fight? Like, yeah, stop it, stop it! You're not a boxer. Just go to jail on your on your fucking handgun possession and shut the fuck up. <laughs> right? Which you're British. Where the fuck did you even get a handgun from? What? And what would you do? You wouldn't know how to use it, <laughs> dumbass. But yeah, other like you said, other than that. 
I really like this movie. It's it's so good. And like before we started recording, the one thing that I said was like this is this is just a way better version of the first Rocky. Like and, and not because of the writing or blah blah blah. Because the writing it's it was really good in the first Rocky. We obviously tongue kissed the hell out of it when we reviewed it. So the the writing is still really good. The story is still really good, but everything else about it, the the way some of these boxers looked, the actual like boxing footage that they mm-hmm. that they use, um, the the cameras. I mean, everything was just upgraded from 75 76 to 2015 you know what i mean so oh, no it was just i hear like, exactly what you're saying it's rocky on steroids yeah it's it's elitist rocky because what armando's <laughs> saying is they wiped out all of the poor made every <laughs> character elevated and a little wealthy and prettier and then made the choreography for the fight scenes better that's fair that's what they did. They just removed all of the poor from this. And our mind was like, you know what? These one percenters like, got it tough, man. <laughs> Trying to make it on like, his own merits. And like even he left a mansion in Philly. He did reverse Fresh Prince. He <laughs> left LA and went to Philly to be poor. And he just pretended but, to be poor like a king. But when you get to his apartment, the one thing about Michael B. Jordan's apartment is like, A, it's a studio. It's like Rocky's Mm -hmm. original apartment. You know what's not in his apartment? Newspapers strewn about. Beer bottles shoved behind the fucking, behind the couch. Like, he's not not a poor poor. That's what I liked about it. Look, man. (laughs) You cannot fault Rocky for having to piss in a fucking beer bottle and wipe his ass with toilet paper. That is not 100% his fault. Those were the times. No, I will always fight. It was the one. 70s. I fight for the 99%. Uh, Fuck this elite <laughs> bastard. I love it. On that note, do you have anything else for this movie? No, fight the power. Fight the power and fuck Warner Brothers. That's all I got. For real. But for Corey, I'm Armando. This is Kiss the Reviews. And this was 2015's Creed.